All right. Well, Kufar Akbar, everybody. Sorry, we are. Uh, I'm just reloading everything. Somebody got a little carried away and evidently has some, I don't want to say fat fingers because that would be, I don't know. I don't want to say, you know, you don't want to use that word almost anymore uh, when talking about anybody. Uh, but somebody uh, did something that they shouldn't have done like ending a stream when we shouldn't have ended the stream. So I am busy right now reloading everything and bringing uh, everybody back that wants to come back. I, you know, I get it if you um, say, come on, amateurs, what are you thinking about? Why are you I'm, I'm sending messages out right now to everybody? I'm sorry. Uh, why are you, uh, you know, having your feed cut out on you and then you come back, you know, you just look like an amateur. And I could about imagine the messages that I'm going to be getting this week now because of that. But uh, thank you for coming back. Uh, let's go ahead and jump back to what we were um, talking about. We were talking about uh, the early church fathers before we got pulled. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start at the beginning and then we'll just work. Uh, we'll work our way from there. Now, I was told that if I just push Shift S, I can, uh, I can. There, Issa got the message. At least Issa got the message. Did you get my email, sir? I did. Thank you so much. Uh, you're welcome. Yes. Okay. And I was, I was going to put in uh, the comments here. Let me put in the comments here. Um, if you want this uh, slideshow that I have here, let's see. Um, I, all you have to do is send me an email and I will send it to you free of charge. So you just email me at Eric Thekifer at gmail.com. Okay. So that shift, what is that shift S for share? Is that it, Brad? Or no? What is it? What is the toggle? Does it shift S? It doesn't matter. I'm just going to do it anyway. Present, bring it. Oh, oh wait, I can, I can see why. There it is, because I'm not there. I don't have it. Ooh, we are just running through a comedy of errors today. Way to go. Yeah, All right. Sure so, so are we live? We, uh, we are live. We're live on YouTube, and we are live on X. We need to go live on Rumble. Um, can't do it because <coughs> I can't do it. Just skip the Rumble. No. I'm okay. Sorry. All right. We got to set uh, that up in advance. Yeah. All right. Oh, I did. Right, that was all my fault. I hit the wrong button. Sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. I meant, to, I meant to check out what was going on with YouTube, and I hit live stream for everybody. Mm. And I was like, that could be you know. dangerous and damaging. Hey, uh, what's your uh, uh, Twitter account? Mine? Yeah. Uh, Eric, Eric Secafer. Oh, okay. uh, no. Is it like at? Isn't Twitter at? It's at something. Yeah. I'll find yeah. Yeah, at, yeah. At Eric, all one word. Eric Beckhafer, Beckhafer, uh, and that's my Twitter thing. So follow me, and I'll follow you right back. Um, I'm get I'm getting a lot of people respond uh, to to my Twitter comments. So I. I I think that's kind of fun going over to Twitter because they're not as big as Nazis as Facebook. Facebook, oh my goodness. I mean, you even sneeze over there. Bam! 30 days. Out you go. Uh, it's like being sent to the gulag in the Soviet Union. Did I say that about fascist book? Fascist book? Yes. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the early church fathers. We were talking about the reason why we were doing the early church fathers is because one of the most often posed objections to Christianity is, is you don't know who wrote the Gospels. The Gospels are corrupted. Yada, yada, yada. Number one, number one, let me just say this. The Gospels are not corrupted. If you were going to say that the Gospels are corrupted, you're going to come on the show, email me or whatever, and say that the Gospels are corrupted. I want you to provide me a definition of what corruption is. I want you to provide me that definition. And also, if you are going to provide me a definition of what corruption is, I want you to I want you to apply that standard of corruption to the Quran, to the Ahadith, and to the Sirah. 
I dare you, I double dog dare you, I Muhammad dare you. Give it the best shot. When we start talking about the corruption of the Gospels, let me just let me just make sure we understand this. The corruption of the Gospels, according to most of the um, Dawagandas, is, is that, okay, you have uh, John spelt differently in this manuscript than you do over here. That is corruption. You have this word order changed from this manuscript to that manuscript. That is corruption. You have an insertion. For an example, there was in Mark today. Hold on. Let me grab a Bible. Let me grab um, have one up here in Mark today. Get my blue letter Bible on my Kindle. And Mark in uh, chapter 15, verse 28. Let's start at 27. And when they and with him they crucified two robbers, one on his left and one on his or one on his right and one on his left. That's verse 27. Now, verse 28, King James Version. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, and he was numbered with the transgressors. However, if you go to the ESV NIV, it doesn't have verse 28. And here's why they does, doesn't have verse 28. It's because that is an insertion. That is a commentary by a scribe. How do we know it's a commentary by, this, by a scribe? Because we have the manuscript evidence for it. We can see that the little um, notation was made out in the margin. It's like uh, John chapter 5, verse two or something verse four or something like that it's not in uh most uh, or it's not in the niv or the esv and the reason why is because it was a little note that was made out in the margins on one of the manuscripts and then they started using the incorporating this note where it was made and inserting it into the gospel itself um as a, a more of an explanation of what was going on here so is that corrupting the gospel no that's not corrupting the gospel but we're able to do honest uh, scholarship on it to determine what is an insertion and what is not. What we do know, if that is the case, what we do know is that we do have the, the whole of the gospel. However, there have been things that were added, like these comments. Um, another popular one that they, is often thrown in the face of 1 John 5, 7, uh, where it talks about the Trinity. See, you have to put the Trinity in there in order to, to believe it. No, you don't. And you don't have to do that because there's all kinds of other places in the Bible where we see the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit all in one plot, one spot, like the, the baptism of Jesus. You have Jesus being baptized. You have the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dove. And then you have the Father speaking of heaven. This is my Son in whom I will please. So you have all of these all over the New Testament. So you don't need that. But if you want to say, well, the whole gospel has been corrupted, or we can't know anything about Jesus, and it was Paul who corrupted everything, you go right on ahead and live in your ignorance. Live there and suffer there. Um, and I will guarantee you, I will guarantee you that if you follow the Quran, because you think that the gospels are, 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 are corrupted, you, you are going to die in your sins without Jesus Christ. And that's what the gospel message is. It's the good news. The Injil means good news, goobers. That's what it means, the good news. The good news of what? What Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross. His sacrificial atonement for our sins saves us from our sins. We cannot save our sins from ourself, our, ourselves. Christ saves our, us from our sins. Why? Because he died for us. And your Quran denies the very basic thing that he died on a cross. How stupid is that? Somebody 600 years later comes up and says, hey, he died on a cross. Uh, well, uh, everything else before that says that he didn't die. But, oh, no, no, you have this right here, the great treaty of, of Seth, or you have the uh, whatever that her heretical group. We have all these heretical groups and these heretical writings that say that he didn't die. If you want to believe or you want to entrust your eternity on known, well-documented heresies from the second and third, late, I would say late second cent, uh, century when you get to, I just, I can't remember that group 
off the top of my head, but I do know that the Great Treatise of Seth is where Muhammad got that idea. It's right, I mean, you could go through the Great Treatise, Second Great Treatise of Seth, and compare that to 4, 157 or that passage in chapter 4. Yeah, that's where he got it. He plagiarized it is what he did. So you can go ahead and believe your corruption shtick all day long. Okay, uh, let's go to the screen share here. Okay, so uh, when we talk about the early church fathers, and let's make sure we understand um, why we're discussing the early church fathers. One thing that Muslims often tell us is that we have a chain of ismads, chain of transmission that tells us what Muhammad said, what Muhammad did, how he lived his life, how to pray, how to treat each other, da 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 da. You have all these things. And they have them in their hadith. And the hadith provides them the sunnah, the, 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 the practice of Muhammad. And it is, it is permissible to follow the sunnah of Muhammad, is encouraged to follow the sunnah of Muhammad. And we have spelled out time after time after time on this show that following the sunnah of Muhammad will land you in jail today. So I would recommend that you reevaluate that Sunnah. But the Sunnah of Muhammad was passed down orally, supposedly, for the first 200 years. The first writer of the Sunnah of Muhammad was the guy by the name of Bukhari, Sahih Bukhari. He was the first compiler. Let me rephrase that so I don't get people calling me names. First compiler of Hadith of Muhammad was a guy by the name of Bukhari. He lived in 870 A.D. Does anybody see a problem with that? I would hope so, because Muhammad died in 632. So you're talking about uh, two, over 200, almost 250 years from the time that Muhammad died to the time that it's finally compiled. Uh, Muslim is after that, and the other four main compilers of, of, uh, of, uh, of a hadith are after that too, for the next 20, 30 years or whatever. So you're talking well over two centuries before we get anything said by Muhammad. His Sira, his biography, we don't have anything for 200 years. We have Hisham, who got it from Ishak. Ishak lived 100 years after Muhammad. He wrote down, supposedly, a biography 100 years after the man's been dead. Um, over 100 years after the man's been dead, by the way. Um, and then Hisham wrote down what Ishak wrote. And that's all we know. And even that is not true. And I'm not going to get into that today. So when you want to start comparing apples to oranges here, go ahead. Give it your best shot, gunfighter, because we, we have a chain of writings in Christianity. When we look at Christianity, you have Jesus Christ and what he did. People who wrote about what Jesus Christ did, John, Peter, Paul. All were contemporaneous with Jesus Christ. Now, Paul, granted, was not a direct disciple of Jesus Christ. But it was definitely an ordained apostle of Jesus Christ. Peter was definitely a disciple of Jesus Christ. And he knew a guy by the name of Ignatius, who was one of his disciples, and Clement of Rome. Clement of Rome was also a follower of Paul. And then when you get over here to John, you have Polycarp. I'm doing this the wrong spot here. Let me get my highlighter so we can. Okay, you have Polycarp. Polycarp was a, uh, a disciple of John. Papias was a disciple of John and Ignatius. And then from Polycarp, you go to Irenaeus, who's probably the most prolific of all of the early church fathers. And you get from him Justin Martyr and Hippolytus. So you can see we have a chain, not of narration, but we have a chain of authorship, of writings with our. Uh, with 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 our um, uh, with, with our traditions. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the things that they said. Clement of Rome, of course, was a disciple of Paul and Peter, and he was the bishop of Rome in eighty eight to ninety nine, and he's the first what we consider the first apostolic father, um, and he uh, uh, was a leader in Rome after the death of Peter and Paul, and he essentially taught. What they taught. So he establishes this apostolic line of succession. And then you have Papias. Now, Papias, we don't have any of the, the surviving documents of Papias. Papias, whoops, wrong one, sorry. Papias 
uh, his are, we get what he wrote from um, uh, Eusebius, who was the church historian. But he lived from 60 to 130 AD. He was a student of John, um, and he was known as the person who uh, wrote down the sayings. What where did I have it up here? The sayings of the Lord. There you go. That was what he wrote. Um, and then you have the story of the woman taken in adultery comes from his writings. Um, we don't find that in the earliest manuscripts, but we know it came from Papias. Papias being a disciple of John, John being an eyewitness to Jesus Christ. He would know. Um, and some of the things that we have with Papias is that we get to understand this. And like I said, if you want a copy of this, if you want a copy of this, uh, uh, if you want a copy of this uh, slideshow, email me. I put my email address up here. Eric Thickfer at gmail.com, and I will be glad to send you this. And I'll just try to write it down or whatever. I'll, I'll send it to you. Um, no problem. Um, okay, so with Papias, we generally get to know who's related to who and how every, everybody's interacting with one another. And then Polycarp, who was a direct disciple of John. Uh, he ends up being the uh, bishop in Smyrna, which is in modern-day Turkey. And look what he wrote about Jesus Christ. Now, this idea, let me make sure we understand that. This idea that Jesus Christ was made God by the Council of Nicaea is moronic. It is about as dumb as you get. And But we hear this all the time. So how can, how can... You have early church fathers who lived centuries before the Council of Nicaea saying, believe in our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, and God. How can you have that? Oh, contour, montour. Then you have Ignatius. I told you Ignatius was another follower of, of, of John, the Apostle John. And look what he says about this. He says, Jesus Christ, who? Our God. So you have early church fathers, early attestation to the, the what was being taught to uh, what was being taught by the earliest church. This is early, folks. I mean, if you want to talk about getting early, if you guys, if, if um, somebody wants to go ahead and pull up First Corinthians uh, fifteen verses three through eight, that's an early church creed, folks. That was thought to be written. Even Bart Ehrman. Where is my friend Bart? Bart Ehrman. Even Bart Ehrman and his... Is it? No, that's not it. Anyway, even Bart Ehrman in his desperate attempt to deny the deity of Christ uh, admits that, that that verse, 1 Corinthians uh, 15, verses uh, 3 through 8, is a, creedal, is a creedal statement that was developed within a year of the crucifixion of Christ. This is what the earliest Christians were uh, uh, teaching one another, and they would recite this. He died according to the scriptures. He was buried according to the scriptures. He rose again according to the scriptures. He was seen by Peter, John, according to the, and then witnessed by 500 others, and all of them, his brother, Jan, you know, all of that, is with is a creedal statement within a year of the cross. You don't get better attestation than that, folks. You, you simply don't. And when you have early church fathers saying these types of things, Jesus Christ, our God, to try to say that the early church did not teach that Jesus Christ was God is absolutely absurd. Ignatius also, so look what he writes here. For our God, Jesus the Christ, oh, um, God appeared in human form she was for our god jesus christ is more, i mean folks this is somebody who knew the disciples was a student of the disciples it does not get any better than this then you have justin martyr now we went through this and i, I got these out of whack here i should have this differently because you have just you have um ignatius we were just talking about polycarp who we talked about their main student was this guy here, Irenaeus, and we're going to get to him. His was Justin Martyr. So this, this next slide should be after Irenaeus, but my bad. Uh, so let's get down to what Justin Martyr said. Justin Martyr 
says Christ being Lord and God. Justin Martyr said Christ is called both God and Lord. And Justin Martyr wrote he was God, son of the only begotten, unutterable God. So he, Justin Martyr is saying that Jesus Christ is God. Now, I want to switch over to a document that Rad had sent me. And he sent it to me on Skype. Let me bring this up here. So um, I got to stop that screen and then present right there. Okay. So here are a couple other, <clears throat> a couple other uh, uh, sayings of Justin Martyr. Uh, Most true God, the Father, Him, and the Son, prophetic spirit, spirit, um, learn that He is the Son of the true. God himself holding him to be second. Okay, so the, the Muslims deny the sonship of God. The second place after unchanging. Where else is this read? We worship him. Uh, what's this one here? Dedicated because the, here we go. Unbegotten gods from Jesus Christ. Uh, and water, name of God the Father, the master of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and of the Holy Spirit. Well, there's a trinity right there. She yep. lives. Now the word of God is his son, also called an angel, writing. I mean, you, you have it all over Justin Martyr's writings, for crying out loud. I mean, Actually, let me pull it up on my end, because I want to read over some of that stuff, get more in clear in depth here. Um, yeah, we ain't going to share my screen again. But, yeah. But So what are we doing? No, leave yours up. You're sharing, okay. but I'm, I'm not going to share mine. Okay, so... This is all from the first apology of Justin Martyr, which you can find online. And also, we have other words. Well, I forgot I did all this. I thought I only did a little bit. Um, yeah, so here's what we got. Um, so in, in section six, part six of the first apology of Justin Martyr, uh, that's the, we're in the first paragraph. We have Justin Martyr, I'm speaking, uh, so he says, so then we are called godless. For certainly, we certainly confess that, that we are godless with reference to beings like those who are commonly thought of as gods, but not with a reference to the most true God, the Father. What does Jesus say? Who is, who is the true God? The Father, right? What does he say? Um, that they may know you, Father, in, in, in John. Also, wasn't uh, Justin Martyr a disciple of John, right? Okay. So clearly, he is getting this from the Gospel of John, okay? So I wanted to say, of righteousness and temperance, the other virtues, who 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 untouched by evil, him the Father, and the Son, who came from him the Father and taught us these things, and the army of the other good angels who followed him and are made like him, and and the prophetic spirit, we worship and adore. So right here. In section six, we have the true God, the Father, the true God, the Son, and the prophetic spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, who we worship and adore. All these three are worshipped. Okay? This right clearly here, in the first century A.D., right? Wasn't it when Justin was writing? 100 or so A.D., between 100 and 200 A.D., right? Am I correct on that? Uh, I'd have to look, but yeah, it's right after Iron Age. Um, sure. Let me go back up. Let me go back up. It's okay. Uh, Justin, Mar uh, I don't have that. Wait a second. No, no, no. I have it. I do. I got it. Hold on. Give me a minute. Uh, 100 to 165. Right. Is when okay. Very, very, very early on. Well, let's continue. So in section 13, he is ready. Okay. Um, I'm going to go like... Um, Right, the, the sentence above this part where I got highlighted in yellow mm -hmm. will show that we honor him in accordance with reason, having learned that he is the son of the true God himself. What does it say? We will show that we honor him in accordance with reason, having learned that he is the son of the true God himself, and holding him to be what? The second place. <laughs> And the prophetic spirit, the third rank. So we we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We have the Trinity right here. 
It is for also, no, also, no, also notice it says a crucified man. Exactly. What, is, okay. what is Muslim? What do Muslims deny? The crucifixion of Christ. Exactly. Exactly. It is for this that they charge us with madness, saying that we give the second place after the unchanging and, and ever existing God and beginner of all things to a crucified man. So here he is saying, you are charging us with madness because we give the second place in, well, what we now call the Trinity, the second place, okay, um, um, that, that to the unchanging, uh, um, after the unchanging and ever existing God, which would be the Father, right? To a crucified man. Okay. Here again, uh, this is going to section 49 now. I got a little section highlighted. Here again is how it was said through the same Isaiah and the peoples of the Gentiles, uh, that the peoples of the Gentiles who were not looking for him would worship him. He's talking about Jesus here. And the Jews who were constantly looking for him would not recognize him when he came. These words are spoken in the character, uh, as in the character of the Christ himself, as follows. I became manifest to those who asked not after me. I was found by those who sought me not. Scrolling down a little bit more. Um, second highlighted section. Um, but men of the Gentiles, who had never even heard about Christ until his apostles uh, who came forth from Jerusalem testified to these things about him and gave him the prophecies that were fulfilled with joy and faithful, turned away from their idols and, dated, and dedicated themselves to the what? The unbegotten God through Christ. Regarding baptism. For they are then washed in water in the name of what? God the Father, and that's it? No. For they are then washed in water in the name of God the Father, and Master of all, and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and of the Holy Spirit. Again, right there, the Trinity. Taken from what? Matthew. It's right, Matthew. Go out and teach them, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right? Mm -hmm. Great mission. Matthew right. 28. Christ is God who spoke from the bush. Now, the word of God, this is in section 63. Now, the word of God is his son. As I said before, he is also called angel, an apostle. For as the angel, he announces what it is necessary to know. And as an apostle is set forth to testify to what is announced. And as our Lord himself said, he that hears me, hears him that sent me. This can be made clear from the writings of Moses, in which this to be found. And, and the angel of God spoke to Moses in a flame of fire out of the bush and said, I am he who is God of Abraham. God of Isaac, God of Jacob, the God of your fathers, go down to Egypt and bring out my peoples. So according to Justin Martyr, who spoke from the bush? Who spoke from the bush? God the Father, God the Son. God the, the Son. Yeah, there you go. He is the angel of the Lord, the one that God said, do not tempt him, for I have put my name in him. Who has the name of the Lord? No one but God himself. But anyway, we continue. Those, those who wish to, to learn and that follow from this, for it is not possible to put down everything in these pages, but these were words uttered to demonstrate, to demonstrate that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and Apostle who was what thirst in the word? I'm Where sorry, are you at, was Brad? First, the word. Um, Christ God who spoke from the bush under ba after baptism. I'm in the one, two, okay, third. Got it. All, right. All right, sorry. All right. Who was first the word? 
and prepared now in the form of fire. So he's first the word, then he was in the form of fire, now in the image of the bodiless creature. Now, however, having become man by the will of God for the sake of the human race. Here we have the incarnation. The incarnation of God into man found in the first century. Before. Before. Okay? Any surviving, any early surviving documents that have been found of the New Testament. We have the, we have the doctrine of the New Testament right here. 300 years, or what, maybe two, what, 250 years or so before the doctrine of the Trinity. Here we have this here. We have the doctrine of the incarnation, doctrine of the Trinity. Okay? Doctrine of the, Jesus is the word of God that became flesh. And, it, and this is the, the, the point that I've been I've been trying to make here is that this this idea that uh, our Christianity, um, not Christianity, but uh, well, yeah, the Council of Nicaea made Christ divine, and that this idea of that the Christians have that Jesus Christ died on a cross and that uh, the Gospels are corrupted. It's absolutely absurd, especially when you. Especially when you weigh it against all other, let's say, say historical materials, you don't get better attestation for events than you do with the Gospels, as far as the time that they're written to the time that the event occurred, and then you have the multiplicity of the documents or manuscripts that we have that that, that accompany that, and even if they're in the fragmentary form, those still those fragmentary forms confirm the. The, the gospel or the manuscripts that come that come later. So if you have just a fragmentary form, for example, um, the uh, P51, uh, it comes from the Gospel of John, I think. I'm, I'm fairly certain it comes from the Gospel of John. P51 is dated to like 110 uh, AD, less than 100 years after the death of Christ. And what we have in that, that, uh, um, that, that, um, fragment is exactly what we have today in the Gospel of John. So there's no changes. There's no corruption from that fragment. And every fragment that we have after that for hundreds of years is confirmed in later manuscripts. We still have the same thing in later manuscripts. So if you're going to say that the Gospels have been corrupted, you're going to have to show me by show me when were they corrupted, by whom they were corrupted, and what exactly was corrupted. And if you're going to say it's a corruption, you're going to you're going to have to tell me a corruption from what. And this is when I was talking about Avery earlier, um, God Logic. If you haven't, I didn't mention him. I guess in this stream here, um, if you haven't gone over there, subscribe to his channel, watch his videos. But this is what what, what I was uh, alluding to earlier when we start looking at these early manuscripts and how I lost my train of thought. These early manuscripts. What was I saying? Having a senior moment. I know. I'm sorry. I, I'm saying that it's early uh, manuscripts. I know. We were talking about the early man. When we start talking about um, the corruption. Oh, that's right. When we start talking about corruption, you're going to have to show me when they were corrupted and by whom they were corrupted. But more importantly, what was their form prior to being corrupted? And this is what Avery presses them on. It's the Injil. They keep saying that, well, we find uh, uh, Muhammad written in the Inshil. What is that? Five, chapter five. Let me find that. Chapter five, 157, I think it is. Let me go to it. Don't want to be misquoted here. No, chapter seven, 157. Where are you? 163, 157. Those who follow the messenger, the Gentile prophet, whom they will find described for them in the Torah and the gospel, he will command them with fairness. Okay, so we're supposed to find Muhammad in the Torah and the gospel, 7, 157. The Torah and the gospel that is with them. Well, we know what was with them. Why? Because we have manuscripts that predate the 7th century when these events supposedly happened by over two centuries. The Santiaticus dates clear back to the 4th century. So we have complete Gospels, complete Bibles, centuries before Muhammad. And so we know, therefore, what they had in their hands. And what they had in their hands 
does not mention Muhammad at all. So you know, any any way that you want to you want to slice and dice the Quran based on manuscript evidence, based on uh, what's in the Quran, or based on and, and juxtapose that off of what we have from the early church fathers and what we have uh, in, in the New Testament, it's easy pie. And the Injil, I, I forgot to expound on the Injil. This is where he was giving them fits. He was saying, okay, you say that the, 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 the Gospels are corrupted. Yes. Okay. The Gospels are corrupted. And how do you know that? Well, the Bible or the Quran mentions that Jesus was given the Injil. But we don't have the Injil today. So how do you know? what was in the Injil is not what we have today. How can you say that what we have today is different from the Injil if you don't have the Injil? How is that possible? How can you say what we have today from the Gospels is a corruption of what was in the Injil when you don't have the Injil? And here's another thing about the Injil too, other than being just, and, and this is what's crazy. I mean, they just make crap up. Well, they don't, they don't. They don't have this in jail. Right. They nobody. Jail. No. Yeah. Nobody has it. But here's what's even more no, like, astonishing. No. Nobody mentions this in jail by calling it an in jail ever until the seventh century. Nobody heard of it, mentioned it, said that there was another gospel. Nobody heard of this. Well, well, if that's what. Did, where is if, it? If, if, if you listen to the thing with Avery and uh, Hamza, Hamza right. was like. Are yeah, you saying I'm it's not that. possible that there were heretical writings? Okay, if, if sure, anything's possible. It's possible that the sun actually does sit in a muddy spring or, or whatever. But no, that's not possible. <laughs> right. Just, You're because, right. Just, just because something is possible doesn't mean it's probable. Okay, and doesn't mean that it happened. You have yeah, to. It is possible that Muhammad okay. did ride a, a winged yeah. pony to exactly. from Mecca to Jerusalem. I mean, no, that's you, you know, this is my favorite topic. This is the thing I always love talking about, and I think it's really interesting because. It's just a hypocrisy to take this type of position, and it and also it's a theological uh, dark hole. If you say that the texts are tahrif or corrupted, then what that means is that God is like a deceiver or God is um, is weak. It's a terribly it's a terrible theological position, and it's not even like a traditional Islamic position. This it's is a not. new position that's, that people that's what, have that's taken. That's going to be in my book right there, Isa too. Is that this? This is not the standard Islamic tradition that the, that, there, that the Bible has been corrupted. You're absolutely right. And now, explain to me, explain to us what you mean by hypocrisy. Well, why is this hypocritical? It's 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 a it's a, it's a hypocritical position because what would happen is if you're going to say, you know, uh, if you're going to take this kind of standard that you know these things are um, corrupted. Then how do you say that your own text is not like you, you, just like you had said before? It creates this cr very problematic space. Why do you get to have this standard and other people don't get to have this standard? You know, it, 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 and it's like um, it, maybe the best words not hypocrite, but special pleading. It's a special pleading fallacy. So yeah, and that's exactly what um, uh, Hamza Mayat was doing on every show well how can you say that these things didn't exist are these uh, uh these writings may not have existed or these things uh were not part of the part of the of, of christianity how can you say that the gospel of mary or the gospel of peter or the you know the shepherd of hermes or all these why, why can't you why, why how can you say that these are not part of the canonical gospels and what why because we have Bibles that predate all that. Now, come on. I mean, this is this is this is absolutely absurd. This is not how history is done. You can't make. You cannot say, okay, um, we believe that this writing out here by the Basladids. That was the the group that I was trying to come up with before. Um, but that this Basladid group that teaches that Jesus was not crucified. How can you say that they weren't the right ones? Because these guys were a bunch of monks living out in the desert that smelled like sheep, and they they were they were shunned by everybody. This is this is this is like the the Branch Davidians. This is a heretical group, and everybody recognized it. that's why they were rejected. Now, if you want to demonstrate 
the truthfulness of the, the validity of Islam based on heretical known heretical texts of the time, then you go right on ahead. If your eternal salvation is dependent upon the, the validity of heretical texts, and you go ahead and, and you, you you sit in that bed or you, you sleep in that bed um, well, what, what, because that's that absolutely what, absurd. What, what's funny on that, what, when they appeal to the heretical text like from the Nag Hammadi, right. okay, all the heretical texts actually refute and contradict Islam. So them what appealing... The, the Nag like, Hammadi like, library? That's what... Yeah, the, the Nag Hammadi the, library, yeah. Uh, that's the what we talk about the great... Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, stuff like the, that, yeah. Jesus or, or not the being gospel crucified. Peter, stuff like that, yeah. So, 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 so it totally contradicts. It might back up one part, you know, that, oh, no, it was really someone that made to appear, you know, like Jesus, which is totally, completely stupid um, from a theological standpoint. Um, but well, you from know, a historical that, standpoint, too. Historical it's standpoint, not just the, even, yeah, historical and theological standpoint. But, 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 it, but, it, but the rest of it contradicts um, um, the, the doctrine of Islam. Even the forgery of the Gospel of Barnabas from the 14th or 15th century in Italy um, contradicts um, um, the, the doctrine of Islam because it says that um, Muhammad is the Messiah. Right. You know, right. I, mean, I mean, they just can't get stuff right. But I want to read a little bit more, and I actually do have to run um, because I go pick up some food. But I do want to read a little <laughs> bit more from Justin Martyr. Um, this is this is like the last section. Actually, I want to read from two sections here. Um, the, uh, the those that say the Father is the Son are condemned. The incarnation and death uh, 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 and the resurrection. Uh, here's what he says: For those who identify the Son and the Father are condemned. He's clearly writing uh, against um, what was it? Uh, Machianism. What, what was it called? The guy Manichism. that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ma okay. Manichism. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. For those who identify the Son and the Father are condemned, as neither knowing the Father nor recognizing that the Father of the universe has a Son, who, being what the Word and the first begotten of God, is also what divine. So clearly, he is saying that Jesus is the first begotten of, is the Word, who is first begotten of God, and is also divine. Then he goes on and he repeats you know, about the burning bush and, and uh, everything else. But here we go, baptism and communion. I think this is very important. Um, 65, section 65. The, the, then bread and a cup of water are mixed, uh, uh, and mixed wine, are brought to the president uh, of the brethren, and he taking them sends up praise and glory to the Father of the universe through the name of the Son and the Holy Spirit and offers thanksgiving at some length that we have been deemed worthy to rece receive these things from him. This food we call, this is section 66, this food we call the Eucharist, of which no one is allowed to partake except one who believes that these things we teach are true and, is, and has received the washing, the, bap or the washing for the forgiveness of sins and for rebirth, and who lives as Christ handed down to us. So clearly, we have communion, the Eucharist, um, bread mixed with wine and water, okay? Um, praise and glory to the Father of the universe through the name of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Again, the Trinity, okay? And then we have, okay, the, uh, um, um, you, can only be, you can only partake of this if you are baptized, okay? All right? Do, do you see what I'm saying? I mean, the whole thing is in Justin Martyr in 100 A.D., the whole thing, mm -hmm. our doctrine, right there. I mean, how, how can you? I mean, on a strong Ishnad change, a change, a strong Ishnad chain. Okay. Well, this is just anyway. a chain. This is, and this is, and I, I understand when we try to compare it to the Ishnad change, which is is an oral tradition, and you know the Ishnad chain. You can actually make an argument against that as being nonsense. Because as the, the the Muslims moved their capital under the, let's see, it was the Umayyads, that they start off with the, the Abbasids, when they moved their capital to Baghdad, they encountered Jews there that had the, uh, the Talmud, which is the commentary on the Bible. And they had an oral tradition that they were finally writing down. So by the time that you, you, you get 
the Muslim Abbasids being established in Baghdad, they look around them and they see this rabbinical tradition of the, the, making a comment on the, the Bible and having it in the, in the, in the Talmud. They say, hey, well, look, we, let's, let's go ahead and do something like that ourselves. So they developed this tradition. And they made, and, and folks, they made up to, <laughs> to think that the Hadith, even Sahih Hadith, are authentic. It, it's, it, it's, it's ludicrous. It, it really is. Um, the Hadith, like I, like I was saying before, Bukhari doesn't write it down until 870, which is, this is, you know, 240 years after the death of Muhammad. Muslim, four or five years later. Then you got al Nasi, Abu Dawood, uh, even uh, Maja, um, you have, you know, they don't write these things down until even 10 years after Bukhari. That's not even the worst of it. The earliest extant copy of any of those writings is 400 years. We're not, we were after the death, we're talking about the 10th and the 11th century before these things start showing up in manuscript form. So we don't have anything. That takes us back that far. It's just absolutely right. ridiculous to compare the two. And that's why I appreciate Isa showing the hypocrisy involved there. Go ahead, Ren. All right. Well, well, I gotta go, but I, I just I just want to conclude with this. Well, first of all, I wasn't comparing this to the Ishnad chain. I was saying this is far superior to the Ishnad chain. Okay. I was, right. I was, you, know, you know, you know, I mean, I was I, I, I was saying that yeah, we, we've got the Ishnad chain before there was the Ishnad. What'd you call it, um, Isa? The mock um um uh, what was it? Muta, some, Muta Walla, whatever. Anyway, yeah, this is before the Muta, before the Walla combined to become the Muta Walla, whatever. Anyway, but but no, uh, clearly from the early church fathers, from our earliest, okay, with a direct chain to the disciples, to multiple chains of, of disciples, um, to, to Jesus Christ, we have actually our doctrine of the Trinity, doctrine of the Incarnation, um, doctrine of baptism, doctrine of communion, um, all of that, okay, in one between 100 and 165 AD, okay, that is far superior, and that's in writing, that's far superior to anything um, you guys have um, in Islam, even if you take the heretical sources that also contradict and attack um, your doctrine as well. Anyway, I do want to apologize for everybody for killing the stream like that, and um, that was... Hold on, this is what you gotta do. Rookie this mistake. Is, Red, Red, this is what you gotta do. I would choose the cow. There we go. You gotta Red, choose rookie the cow. mistake. Total rookie mistake. That was this yeah. is, I did so, I did something that Eric um, um would do. So yeah, that was a total rookie mistake. Yeah. I've only I've only done it once. Yeah. And I remember yeah. I remember the day I did that. That was that yeah. was uh that was absolutely yeah. well, that was absolutely we'll, we'll, nuts. We'll, we'll remember this day for sure. Remember yeah. That? I'll never let you forget it. All right. Uh, let right. me let me finish this up. All right, Red, uh, be careful out there. All right, uh, let's go ahead and finish up Justin Martyr. He was talking about Justin Martyr. Look at and look at some of this language that Justin Martyr uses, folks. Justin Martyr, Christ being Lord and what? And God and the Son of God. Christ is called both God and Lord. He was God. What? Jesus was God. Uh, you would not have denied that he was God. Okay, so he's, he's basically saying Jesus is God, son of the only unbegotten father. Now let's go to Irenaeus. Irenaeus um, is a direct uh, a, a, a disciple of Polycarp. Um, he was uh, a bishop in the church um, in Lyon. Uh, he, let's see here, some of the things that he wrote, Jesus Christ is our Lord and God. Christ himself, therefore, Father, is the God of the living. He himself, in his own right, beyond all men who ever lived, God and Lord and King. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you get to Clement of Alexandria, still writing in the second century. He alone, being both God and man, he appeared as a teacher that as God, uh, that he is made equal to the Lord of the universe. Um, then you get to Tertullian, um, and he is also Christ is also God. Uh, three persons uh, asserting the Trinity. Um, he is one God. 
uh, Hippolytus that we had discussed before. Um, let's see here. He's the Logos, his God, wherefore also the Logos is God, because he was referring to um, Jesus being called the Logos in John 1. Uh, let's see. God, the Word with a human soul. God, the Word, taking the flesh from her and assuming also a human I must have cut that off, sorry. Jesus Christ became a man, the Savior as God. The Son of God is also called omnipotent. Savior. Uh, the Savior is also God. Uh, um, let's see, origin is uh, middle of the third century. Um, these are the church fathers, if you want to look at uh, the, the dates that they lived. Again, if you want a copy of this PowerPoint, go ahead and... Uh, I put let me let me re-enter my email address in the description or in the chat here at gmail.com and here let me put it up on the screen so people can see it also. Um, not mine, not mine. Okay. What? It's mine mine is also in the chat. Just make sure you don't put mine up. <laughs> put, oh, you don't want me to dox you? No, <laughs> that to your sister um right now it wouldn't bother me <laughs> okay well you probably you probably get a bunch of hate mail how dare you affiliate with that kaffir um okay and then i uh, probably will <laughs> uh okay so the conclusion we have more evidence for the gospels than any works from antiquity the early church fathers attest is early um they all proclaim the deity of christ and then if you cannot trust the Gospels, you cannot believe the Gospels, and you just cannot believe anything from history. It's just, it's, it's that, it really is that simple. Um, and I added some stuff here. This was added in Matthew, why we, how we know that the, and how we know that the Gospels are true. Um, that is, that, that's, some, that's probably something that we can do, not next week, next week. I'm still trying to debate whether we should do a show next week because next week is Easter. Um, we probably won't. Um, I'm probably going to have family here all day and uh, they won't appreciate me coming back here and doing the cross and the crescent. Uh, we're going to go ahead and end it there, folks. Uh, I'm sorry that we had to cut the, or we cut the, we cut the, the, the live stream. Uh, uh, Rad cut the live stream, but I'm not going to bring that up. Uh, and well, hopefully he won't do it again. Uh, let me just say this as, a, as an admin note. Uh, the reason why we went with Rumble uh, and X first is because we have a troll out there that goes by the name of well, you all know who Marshall is. I'm, I'm fairly certain. Uh, play the intro again. Uh, and that's the, that's the thing, Delanius. When we do the intro, he reported it for hate speech. And last week's video was taken down because, um, it's because, because it was reported for hate speech. I appealed it, and for some reason, YouTube was like, no, it, it does... And the, the part that he cited as hate speech was that historical photo of Hitler and Himmler. And they said it was hate speech. How that is hate speech, I have no idea. I, I really don't. Um, but this is, you know, YouTube, you have to play by their rules. And when you have scumbags like our friend, and I think with Marshall, and this is the thing with Marshall, you know, I really feel terrible for the guy because he has uh, an addiction problem. And every time that he goes off on his addiction or he, he starts using, this is what happens. He doesn't have anything better to do. So he starts reporting the show because he's promised me, I don't know how many times I'm done upon reporting you. And I'll, you know, I, I swear I'll never do it again. And I'm sorry for doing all this. Stuff. And the next thing you know, he's doing it again. And it's, and I'm, I'm fairly certain it's because um, he's, he's suffering from his addiction again and he's relapsed. Um, and this is what he does when he gets, <clears throat> going and you know again I, I you know i would 
I would say that we need you, we need to pray for the man because uh, he is he's a child of God, just as uh, as all of us are. But he's lost, and he's lost in this cult, this death cult um, that we call um, Islam. Okay, uh, does anybody have Darcy Isa? You have anything to add? Want to add to the the fire here? Now, I must, I'm going to keep saying, read, research, no recitation, and learn. And whatever we say, you have to do your own research. And God yeah. bless you all. Yeah, thanks, Darcy. Yeah, if you don't believe me, I mean, this, is, this stuff is all in the public domain. It's not hard to find. You just have to want to go find it. That's all you got to do. Uh. Isa, I'm going to assume Isa has spoke his piece, has spoken his piece, or he's enjoying the the slideshow that I sent him. Uh, maybe not. All right. Well, God bless y'all, and we will see you next time on the Cross and the Crescent discussion group. God bless.